Hi, this is Pat Moorhead and the 6.5 is live in Barcelona, Spain at Mobile World Congress in the AWS Experience Center. It's exciting and I've been to, I don't know, 15 Mobile World Congresses and the talk and attitudes are positive here, Dan. Yeah, 2023 is a big inflection. A lot of the public perception is that the markets are tough the macros are going to be more challenging, but there's a lot of optimism here. And after spending three days meeting with CEOs from some of the biggest companies in the world and having great conversations here on the 6.5, Pat, I got to say I'm going to be flying back on Friday, both tired, but with a, a bit of optimism about what's ahead. And, you know, this particular event is a bellwether, Pat. It's a bellwether for the future, and the telco mobile industry is so big for everyone's life. Everyone's life. Yeah. I mean... Do you look around, everybody on their phones all day long? Pretty much, and now we're gonna move to kind of device to device to network, which is the future here. But one theme that you, you can't escape here is how AI is making everything better. And I know it's easier to AI wash certain elements, but when it comes to um, network operations, our two guests here are gonna talk about this. How are you? Anand, great to see you again after so many years. Wonderful to see you again, Patrick. Samir, great to see you. Gosh, I, I think I was with you uh, six or seven hours ago at breakfast, so. It was a good breakfast. It was, thank you very much. So anyways, welcome first timers to the 6.5. Thank you, thanks for having us. Yeah, I appreciate you guys joining the show. You know, Pat, you mentioned AI, AI washing and AI, and it has been thematic. I've asked quite a few questions myself in some of the different briefings because it's like, you know, are you going to, you know, you're going to generative AI that? Um, <laughs> but in serious, there is a lot of really pragmatic and practical applications. Another thing, though, that's been really thematic throughout our conversations this week has been sustainability. Yep. That has been a big topic. And so as we've moved towards companies talking about sustainability, I felt like early on a lot to kind of make sure they were appealing and appeasing right. that investor class and the potential you know, employees they're trying to attract. We are seeing with this more austerity uh, focused market, companies getting a little bit more analytical about it, saying we need to do this because it's important to the world, but we also need to do this because it's good for our business. Right. And so you know, we start out a lot talking about manufacturing, or we talk about things like automotive industries, really heavy industries, but the telco industry is really affected by sustainability as well. And, and that's why I was so glad to see it spoken about so much here. Samir, I'd like to kind of get your take on kind of, you know, in this industry, what you're hearing and seeing as it relates to sustainability. Thank you, Dan. Um, first of all, as I talk to my customers uh, on a one-to-one -one basis across the world, the single biggest commonality across all of this beyond 5G is the cost of energy. It has, in some cases, gone up five times, six times, seven times as a real expense item that is affecting the company's bottom line. But more importantly, um, as the number of bits that get pumped through grows exponentially, it is starting to create a sustainability um, issue. Yeah, I mean, data density alone will likely dictate that increase in power consumption. And that same phenomena is happening in hyperscaler data centers too. And when you carry that uh, to the edge, the core network, it's, it's all impacted by this data density, this processing, and then feeding the data back uh, for results. So Anand, you had the insights <laughs> to, to figure this out up front that, that this was and could be a challenge, but also an opportunity out there, didn't you? Correct. Yeah, absolutely. And let me tell, tell you a little bit about what we're doing, right? IRA Technologies is a ML-based wireless company, right? We are founded by industry veterans. Myself, you know me, Pat. Yes. I'm ex-Intel, ex-Qualcomm. My co-founder is ex-Bell Labs, ex-Qualcomm. We are also uh, joined in this adventure with two uh, uh, academic experts, Pramod Vishwanath, who is the early inventor on Flash OFDM, which is the basis for pretty much all wireless today, and Shiram Kannan, um, who's a uh, tenured professor at the University of Washington, right? We weren't a funded startup, right? And what we simplistically do is we apply machine learning to all layers of the RAND stack, and we improve spectral efficiency by greater than 2x, and we improve energy efficiency, right? And what we're here to talk about is how our ML approach can effectively attack and reduce the energy consumption that Samir so eloquently talked about, right? We want to be able to control that 
and give some of the benefits back to the planet. Together, though, because obviously we've brought AWS, we've brought Ira. I understand there's a demo that you're doing alongside with Juniper. Samir, can you talk a little bit about what you're doing? What we're doing uh, here at MWC23 is we're actually showing Era's uh, algorithm, if I could call it that, model, whatever you want to call it, um, running on what's called a Juniper record, radio intelligence controller, right? which is part of the new architecture of a RAN. Now, why the RAN? The RAN's really, depending on the configuration, the band, uh, how, how much throughput, is between 50 to 75% of a network's power consumption. So that is the single biggest lever we have to reduce RAN power consumption. Historically, there's always been this focus on not keeping the RAN on all the time when it's not needed, like at 2 a.m. in the morning. Uh, but that's a very crude method. And it has yielded results. But we believe that there's a better way to do this, where you basically use uh, models such as errors to dynamically control the RAN, how much power it's pumping out, uh, what sectors it switches on and off, based on multiple sources of data. Historically, it was just the network data. But imagine you're able to also view uh, traffic at the same time in real time, app usage, and so on. So when you put all of these into an ML model, we uh, have basically figured out that you can actually do maybe a 2x, a 3x for now, and over time it'll get better. Improvement on what's um, best in class out there for RAN power consumption. So that's what we're showing uh, on a Juniper intelligence controller uh, with their uh, ARAS model running, and uh, VRV helping us test it and make sure that what we're reporting is real and uh, templated against real life examples. Yeah, so Anand, uh, it's funny in the green room, I got a, a quick demo. In fact, uh, one of your engineers gave the demo, which I was impressed with. Um, but what's going on behind the scenes there with yes. KPIs and you know, you explained. So what we've developed is an application. Um, it's a non real time application that sits on the Juniper RAN Intelligent Controller. You can think of the RAN Intelligent Controller or RIC right. effectively as an operating system for the RAN, right? The demo that we're showing is targeted at the open RAN kind of an environment, but there's nothing about the application that we've developed or the environment that precludes it from running on legacy environments, right? So that's the first thing, right? right. Now, how do we do it, right? So we ingest standard KPIs that are made available to us in a legacy system, we ingest those KPIs coming out of an element management system or an EMS system. In an ORAN environment, we ingest those KPIs, key performance indicators, coming out of the O1 interface, right? We take about six or seven of those KPIs, right? And what we're able to intuit or learn using our machine learning is fingerprint what is going on in a particular region, right? So for example, if you're in a rural area or in a city area and we ingest that data, our machine learning model is able to tell how many of those individuals that are on that network are indoors, how many are in a car traveling around, how many are maybe a pedestrian, right? Turns out that actually matters, right? Because if you have many low mobility users, pedestrians, you can actually turn off some of the bands, right? And basically save energy. And so if you had, say, for example, a thresholding algorithm, where if you had more than 100 users on the network, the power is always left on, or the antennas, are always, uh, the, the bands are always left on. It may actually be the wrong thing, because if those guys were moving around, or ladies were moving around, then you might actually be, be benefit yourself by turning the power off without impacting the throughput. At the end of the day, that's what you want to do. Save energy without impacting quality of service. So that's, in a very thumbnail way, what uh, IRA does. We use machine learning to fingerprint the environment, learn from that, and smartly turn energy bands on and off. Yeah, and one of the things I, I appreciated too is that actually when you turn off some of the radios, uh, your throughput can increase as well, which I thought was an unexpected benefit, but you're like, no, no, we knew that <laughs> <laughs> go, go, well, going in there. It also so, just makes so much sense. It does. I mean, the, it like does. you said, it's such a crude method to 
be so binary in a world where there is so much available. Well, it reminds me of the way we used to do data center uh, power management 30 years ago, which was, you know, turn it off or take it down to 50%. But uh, so uh, one thing about this solution that's interesting that you don't see always is you can get benefit today and tomorrow. Right, you have standard RAN configurations today, but also uh, I think pretty much everybody can agree the future is ORAN. We can debate the year, uh, the method, but but um, what are you looking at as some of the benefits of of ORAN uh, to your to your customers? So, uh, from an ORAN perspective, uh, I want to be very clear. Right, I mean we enable VRAN, we enable right. CRAN, we enable ORAN. And our view is that any alphabetical RAN You always have to best, support all of them, right? Yeah, it runs best on AWS. Right. And you're not going to use the same one all the time. That's the benefit of the cloud, right? Yes. So if you want to switch from an ORAN environment to a CRAN in some geos, you can do that really easily on the cloud, which is where our value really comes in. But to answer your question about ORAN, it is all about the data ingestion capability. Right. It is so easy to do that uh, with ORAN. And it's been architected that way with the right APIs. And with a standardized interface in, as opposed to I think right now, there's probably 27 different ways to ingest data that you need to chase around, and that's, that's not efficient. Well articulated, yeah. If I could add to that. Right? Of course. First of all, I would, I would add that the application we've developed and we're demonstrating runs on both legacy and ORAN. Right. But back to ORAN, right? ORAN is as big, you're right, ORAN will happen. You can question the time, time frame when it actually happens. But ORAN is huge for the RAN infrastructure. It's as big a disruptor as what happened in the computing industry with PCs between 1980 and 2000. And what actually happened in that time frame was not just an, a big knock on cost structures, it unleashed innovation in ways that were previously not possible. ORAN is going to do exactly the same thing for the RAN infrastructure. In fact, this demo that we're showing collectively between Amazon, us, and Juniper, and Viavi is a great example of that innovation, right? And that, and so now you take AI and you combine it with the, what's going on in the cloud, you have really huge possibilities of where this can go. Well, you definitely hit all the trends, the trend lines, yeah. you know, mobility, <laughs> AI, sustainability, 5G. Like I, wasn't, I wasn't trying to hit the trends, but <laughs> I like guess a, I like did. A three like a three fur, three fur, four fur. Like one of my Forbes articles. Yeah, you know? three and one. Um, so Samir, let's, let's kind of go, you know, take this home. So I'm hearing you mentioned a comment early on about kind of a lot of the power consumption by telco is done at the RAN. And so this is going to solve some of it, kind of what do you see, is this the biggest contribution that tech can make to solving the energy crisis and the sustainability issues for telco? Or what other methods and means do you see to help accomplish what's going to be a goal that's never, by the way, going to be good enough? We're always going to need to do more. Thank you, uh, Dan. First of all, um, at Amazon, we're absolutely committed to this. You've seen the climate pledge, right? Uh, you've seen that we want to be water positive very soon. 80% um, of our infrastructure today runs on renewable energy. We expect it to be 100% in a few years. So we're taking this very seriously, not because it's the cost necessarily, but just because it's the right thing to do. So in the telco domain, let me talk about three ways we're addressing this issue. The first one is just Moving from on-premises data centers to the cloud by itself means that you're operating on ESG, eventually 100% compatible infrastructure. Number two, it's all about the silicon innovation, which you know you'd appreciate being a <laughs> silicon veteran. I do too. Oh, you're a silicon <laughs> veteran too. Um, we've been investing in our own silicon which we call the Graviton series. Right. And if you uh, look at MWC, what we've announced with uh, NEC's 5G core running at NTT is a 72% power reduction over historical microprocessor architectures. Now, we expect to bring that same energy savings to the RAM over time. And the third one is the power of AIML 
with partners such as ERA to basically take all of the data that's available uh, out there in a governed, controlled manner to create a real business outcome that you know, Anand more eloquently than I talked about. If I might add to that, on that third point on AI ML, we talked a little bit about how we are applying machine learning to reduce the energy consumption. Another way you can actually impact the power consumption of the RAN network is we use machine learning to improve spectral efficiency by greater than 2x. The implication of that is you can actually reduce the number of base stations quite dramatically without reducing coverage or quality in any meaningful way, right? So the net effect of that is fewer G node Bs, fewer base stations means lower power consumption of the RAN. In fact, that'll be a bigger way to impact the power consumption in a positive way than the application we're showing now. So that's another example of how AI ML can be a very positive uh, contributor. Yeah, uh, Samarin and I, both of our companies have written extensively on energy reduction and efficiency. And the three that, that, that you hit on, I'm kind of smiling just because we, we cover your silicon innovation too, and it's, you know, it's, it's Inferentia and it's Tranium that, that, that's coming up as well. And I know that, you know, your latest version of Graviton's not gonna be the last one. Uh, and, and we keep moving it. And fundamentally, when you have a hyperscaler data, uh, a data center, it's built to be the most highly efficient in leveraging it's 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 size. So Dave Brown's going to love this part. No, he is. We're <laughs> going to. I'm, I'm going to text okay, him this video grab him already. Right yeah. Exactly. But uh, anyways, um, I think this is a good place to wrap. Samir and Anand, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. We'd love to get a, an update to you know uh, maybe in a year or so or or sooner to see where the two companies have have aligned. Uh, and you know your march to improved energy uh, efficiency out there. So thank you so much. Sounds good. Thanks for thank having you. us, Patrick, Dan, and uh, it's just the start. It's yep. always day one. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Thanks so much, guys. All right, everybody. There you have it. We are here for the six five at AWS's Inspiration Zone. This is MWC twenty twenty three Barcelona. Pat, for you and me, it's a wrap. It's been a great show. Been a great show. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button, watch all our shows. We'll see you later.